that's really specific about a felon is if you look at your fat pad and did a cross section, you have multiple little compartments, anywhere from 15 to 20 compartments that are broken up by fibrous septa. And these are pretty fibrous and pretty tough. And what will happen is the infection will just build in there and can create a lot of pressure. The complications from this could be a compartment syndrome, right? If there's enough pressure in those septa, it can cause a compartment syndrome with you know, pressure on the nerves and arteries. Uh, the bone of your distal phalanx is right underneath the, those septa, so those can get infected and cause an osteomyelitis if you don't treat this infection. You can also get septic arthritis, right? So the DIP joint is right here below that. That infection can also sometimes track into that joint and cause a septic arthritis. And the last anatomical consideration is the flexor tenosynovitis, right? So your flexor inserts at the base of the distal phalanx, and if that infection goes to that flexor tendon, it can now spread along and cause a flexor tenosynovitis. So these are infections you want to go at relatively aggressively in terms of opening up, getting that infection out, and stopping the spread of it down into those compartments of the digit. In terms of antibiotics, these are typically infections that are a little more aggressive than a perinicchia, so I will have patients take antibiotics as well as perform an IND of the infection to really open up the pockets of abscess. Before we walk you through the videos on the different approaches, I want to talk about what options you have. In terms of the incision site options, the first one is the preferred. It's a longitudinal volar, and this is basically a straight incision down on the volar aspect of your digital pad. The things to remember, though, is you want to start that incision about five millimeters above the DIP joint line, right? Because you don't want to get into the joint and you don't want to get into the insertion of the flexor tendon, remembering your anatomy. But it's basically that's going to be the area of largest fluctuance. You slice it open, abscess, and we'll walk you through a video that shows you how to do this. The other approach is gonna be a lateral approach. And this is usually called a high lateral, and I'll explain in the next slide. But basically, you're opening up at a lateral aspect, and you're gonna be going into that pocket of pus from the side of the digit. The one thing to remember about this, and I'll show you the anatomy, is that you do have a digital nerve and artery that lie in that aspect, so you wanna to try to avoid from damaging those. You can extend that if you have a really big infection to a through and through where you basically have two lateral incisions that connect. That way you can really drain all the pus and all of the septae. And typically, if you're going to be doing this incision, you want to have the same consideration for the neurovascular bundle. But this is something that I would, again, pack with a piece of gauze or packing so you're keeping that open for the next 48 hours so you follow them up and then you can remove it. You'll read some older uh, approaches like the fish mouth or the hockey stick. They typically look like this is the fish mouth uh, incision where you can see you basically are going to be cutting open along the tip. And the thought process here is now you're opening extensively that pad of the digit and really getting all those septae drained. But what we found is this causes a lot of cosme cosmetic issues in terms of healing. It also can cause some neuromas at that digit and really affects the patient's ability to use that digit appropriately. So we no longer really recommend doing this. A hockey stick incision is similar to the fish mouth, except you'd be starting here and going down. And similar to the fish mouth, we really don't recommend it because of the complications that come along with it. The an anatomical landmarks that I pointed out previously, remember the arteries and nerves that run longitudinally to the bone, the tendon sheath insertion right here at the bottom of the distal phalanx, and obviously your DIP joint, which is right here at that crease. Now let's go to a video that shows the longitudinal volar technique. So you can see this uh, has a pretty large felon at the tip. It's that area of fluctuance and swelling on the fingertip pad. They've already cleaned this patient up for aseptic technique and done digital nerve block, but the incision again starts. It's a volar longitudinal incision starting about five millimeters above the crease of the joint, right? To avoid the tendon, uh, flexor tendon. And because of there's these pockets of pus in the septa, you want to make sure that you do some blunt dissection to really open up those pockets, open up all those little compartments of pus, clear them out, and get proper drainage of the entire infected tissue. 
Here they're gonna do a little bit of blunt dissection with the hemostats. You can use your small scissors, just be aware of the distal nerve and artery on the longitudinal and medial aspect. A good idea to maybe get a wound culture. These can sometimes be complicated. You wanna make sure that they respond well to your antibiotics. And then really after that, I will irrigate them. I will bandage them up. If it's a really large infection, I'll consider actually putting a piece of packing in there, right? Something that's gonna keep it open for the next 48 hours to help it drain out. Then with that bandage, you wanna make sure it's nice and bulky, gives a lot of protection to the patient because again, your finger pad is very sensitive. Wrap it up, have the patient with very good return precaution in terms of if this gets worse over the course of the next 24, 48 hours, come back. I, this is a patient that I would absolutely start antibiotics on. It's an infection that's relatively complicated in your digit, so I'd wanna make sure that we get coverage for MRSA or the infection that you're considering. And I'd have this patient come back in 48 hours, either with you or their primary care physician. I wanna make sure the infection's getting better after our procedure and on antibiotics, and I want to make sure I can get that packing out if I've actually placed it. All right, and then let's talk about our lateral approach. I kind of outlined some of the anatomy, but I want to clarify it in this slide. When you're doing a lateral approach, it's totally acceptable. You know, you're going to get good coverage in breaking up all those septae. And if you make it a through and through, you're really going to be going through the entire pad of the digit to make sure you get all that infection. But there are a few pitfalls, right? When you're talking about the lateral approach, I've kind of made a schematic here. These uh, gray bars are going to be your bones, right? So your distal phalanx. And then the green and red is your neurovascular bundle. And just remember, you've got a bundle line cruising right along here on both sides of the digit and the purple dotted line is where you want to make that incision it's called a high lateral incision because you're trying to really get in between the bone and that neurovascular bundle so you're not damaging this when you're opening up that infection typically I do anywhere from about five to six millimeters from the lateral nail fold down and that's where I'm going to kind of guesstimate where my incision is making sure obviously that I'm not right over the bone when I palpate it